everybody and welcome back to the Art Life YouTube channel. My name's Mrs B, I'm an art teacher and I'm here today to show you a really fun task that's super easy, inspired by the famous artist Vincent van Gogh. Now when you're done, your artwork might look a little bit like this and it has four simple steps. This is Vincent van Gogh. Now before he became a painter, he actually had no idea what he wanted to do with his life. He tried being a teacher, like me. He tried working in a gallery. He tried being a priest, but all of these things didn't really make him happy until the day he picked up a paintbrush. After that, his life was never the same and he discovered how much he absolutely loved painting. Now he was quite good at it from the very beginning, but he practiced and practiced and practiced, creating so many artworks throughout his lifetime. Now when he started painting, as you can see here, some of his earlier artworks were a little bit dark and dull. Then as he got more experimental, more expressive and more confident with his paintings, he started to add a lot more color. Now his favorite color and the color he used most often was yellow. He loved the color yellow because it was so bright and made him feel happy. Now one of the artworks that uses yellow in a fantastic way is the Starry Night. Now the Starry Night is actually one of the most famous and recognizable artworks in all of history. It's because of the clever way that Van Gogh created it. Not only did he use yellow to make these stars in the sky so bright and almost look like they're glistening in the sky. He did that with colors, but with the lines that surround those stars and that moon as well. Another thing he did really well was that he was actually able to create a sense of movement in his starry night sky. Something super tricky when creating a still image, make it look like it's moving. Now he did that with lines as well. Notice here in the starry night sky, the swirly lines that are created. Not only that, he uses wispy brush strokes and in doing that makes it look like it's a really windy, blowy, swirly kind of night. If he didn't do that, it might look a little bit flat. And so those lines are really important and gives a sense of movement in his artwork. Now today, we're gonna to be inspired by the wonderful Vincent van Gogh and his famous painting, The Starry Night, and create something that looks a little bit like this. Now, it's not as good as van Gogh's, but I'll try my best. And today, I'll guide you through how to create something like this. So come with me and let's have a go at painting like van Gogh. For today's Vincent van Gogh inspired task, you will need a large piece of white paper. That's what we're going to do most of our work on. You'll also need an A3 piece of black paper, as well as any form of pen, crayon, pastel that will work to draw details on black paper. I'm using a white pen, the pen from Zart Art. These are fantastic because you can really get details with them. I'll offer a link down below if you'd like to get some for yourself as well as a discount code. But a crayon, a white crayon, whatever, things like that will work. You'll also need some watercolours, some crayons, some scissors and a glue stick. So raid your craft drawer and get set up and we'll get started with our Vincent van Gogh Starry Night Sky. We're going to start our artwork on an A3 piece of white paper in landscape today. Now you can do this artwork in A4 size, it won't take as long. But you also need some crayons. We're going to have a go at creating a wispy, swirly, kind of moving sky. And before we use any watercolours, I'm going to just choose some really light coloured crayons. Colours like yellow, even white, maybe some light pinks, and a little bit of grey possibly. You can choose whatever colours you like, but these are the ones I'm working with today. Now you won't even be able to see the white on white, but I'm actually going to 
draw some big swirls. I'm pressing really hard with my crayon. I might do it in another color so you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go, big swirls. And I'm pressing hard because we want these waxed drawings to be able to shine through once we paint over them with watercolor. It's called a wax resist. And so the wax of the crayons actually pop through the water of the watercolor, but it doesn't work if you don't press hard enough. I'll demonstrate that here. See this spiral? I didn't press very hard there. And what you'll notice later is that we won't actually see that once we paint over it. So we want our sky to be moving or the illusion of movement, just like, whoops, pressed too hard. <laughs> just like Vincent van Gogh did when creating his starry night sky. So these lines, these wavy, wavy lines everywhere in your sky are the first step. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Just try not to break too many crayons. Cool. Now I don't need to go all the way down to the bottom because I'm actually gonna use the bottom of this piece of paper for something else. So once you've done that, you can get set up to paint with your watercolor palette. This is my favorite watercolor palette. It's a brand called Micador and it's available through Zart Art, the people that I order from. Um, if you want something like this, I suggest that you get, so I think it's about 14 or 15 Australian dollars. You can see all the colors. It's just so fantastic. And so these are the ones I use in my classroom and also with my girls at home. Um, so there's a link below if you'd like to get your hands on one of those. Obviously minus 10% that I can offer you too. All right, that's step number one, done. before just going straight ahead and painting straight over our swirls to make a sky, I want to have a quick chat about the style of Vincent van Gogh's paintings. Now have a look at this artwork and notice the type of brush strokes that Vincent van Gogh used to do. Now van Gogh used to apply paint really thickly to create a fantastic texture or impasto. So if you were to touch the artwork, it would feel bumpy and he would go through tubes and tubes of paint to get that effect. Now, not only that, he also used short, sharp, wispy brush strokes quite often in his work. It's kind of like an impressionist kind of style, like this, wispy, wispy, wispy. Now we're gonna have a go at using that wispy sort of brush stroke technique with our sky. So when you're painting, be careful not to do coloring in painting as I call it like this, back and forth. We also don't just wanna fill a space in like we normally do like that. We wanna use short, small brush strokes like this. And I'm also going to have a go at using colors that are similar in the same area. So we've talked a lot about harmonious colors and they're the colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So I'm gonna have a go at sort of using them amongst each other today. So those brush strokes really stand out. So the colors I'm gonna use for my sky are sort of the blues and purple kind of family. You may choose whatever you like though. If you'd like to use orange and yellow, make it look more like a sunset, that would be beautiful. Otherwise, you could do something more in the green, blue kind of regime, and that's very similar to the Starry Night itself. But remember, we're using a few different colors, and we're having a go at wisping, or creating those really obvious brush strokes when we're painting. Now you might even notice too, look, I'm painting over my white crayon now, that that wax resist is starting to happen. And so those swirls underneath, just gonna add to that kind of wispy movement, or that windy night that we're trying to get the effect of. Now I do this task with my grade two kids. 
I think they're probably about seven or eight years old and they're really able to do this task quite well. So I always tell them we still want to cover all the white gaps as best as we can. We're trying to concentrate on their strokes is a really fun and important task for them to learn when painting. It's quite relaxing actually, I hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> You might notice that I'm not really cleaning my brush each time I go in for a new colour. That's okay. It's because they're similar colours, if they mix, they're never going to really go too gross. They're not going to go a yucky pooey brown or anything. They're just going to merge together and create a new, nice, appealing colour. And that's the great thing about harmonious colours. I'd love to find out who your favourite artist is. Vincent Van Gogh is definitely one of my favourites. And if you have a favourite, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. And thank you for those people who have been asking me about how my pregnancy is going. Um, I'm feeling a lot better, thank you. <laughs> and I'm about halfway now, so uh, I'll be due in about four and a half months time. Now you'll see when I'm painting over the top of this very light spiral that I did to demonstrate to you that if you don't press hard enough, that wax resist doesn't really come through. You can see compared to when I press nice and hard there. So it is important with that first step to use your muscles and try to press nice and hard so that that wispy, swirly background shines through. Task doesn't really take too long. This is probably taking me about five minutes um, to do step number one and step number two. The next step will take a little bit longer, but I'm generally able to get a beautiful result with my grade two students with one double period in my classroom, which is about 90 minutes. So you should be able to start and finish a task like this within that time if you're an art teacher. Now, you do not need to paint all the way to the bottom. You can leave sort of a space down here because we're actually going to use our black paper and cover it so there's no point in wasting time painting something that you're just going to cover up anyway so you can just go up to that line and you'll see why soon yeah my starry night windy night swirly night sky is complete I always ask my students to check that there's no white gaps anywhere, that you've gone right to the edges, just showing really good workmanship to make sure that you've covered the whole space in colour. Now, we will let that dry and move on to step number three. Okay, you no longer need any paints or crayons, but you will need a white pen, pencil or crayon that's gonna work on black paper. You'll also need some scissors, some glue, and a piece of black paper the same size as the starry night background that you used. So the first thing you need to do, you might choose to do this part with a ruler, is just draw a line to indicate the ground. Now, on top of my ground, I'm going to create a city. Now you do have a choice here. You can choose to do some simple, tall buildings like this. Again, you might choose to use a ruler if you'd like them to be really straight. If you'd like to do something more like a town, you might choose to do homes or even trees. Or if you'd like your artwork to look similar to Vincent van Gogh's, you could do a chapel or a big sort of cypress tree that looks like a big flame like this. It's completely up to you, but I suggest doing four or five sort of separate objects. And today we're just focusing on the silhouette. Whatever you draw, you need to be able to cut along that white line. 
So if you don't feel like your skill level is up to cutting such a tricky kind of shape, maybe stick to some more simple shapes like the rectangles of a building or sort of the triangle of a home. So I'm going to now go ahead and carefully cut along this line. But when I cut, I'm going along here, then I'm going to go up to my first object and cut that out. Then I'm going to come down and across and then up to my next object. So the idea is that I create one big black piece that has my objects all together. Some students may get confused at this stage and they might choose just to cut a few objects out separately and stick that on. That's okay too, but this is actually quite a tricky complicated cutting task, which is fantastic practice for the young kids. Now notice I haven't done any windows or any details on any of the objects yet. We'll do that later, so don't stress. Now my cutting, as you're noticing, probably is not perfect and it doesn't really need to be because this side is actually not going to be seen. I'm going to turn my paper over so that you can have a beautiful silhouette. So your cutting does need to be neat because we need to be able to see what the objects are. But now that it's one piece of black paper, I can start to add the details with my white pen onto the good side. Now, obviously the level of detail you go to will probably depend on how much time you have and whether you're doing this at school or at home. There, my details are all drawn and I can now just put some glue on the back of this and stick it directly on to my Starry Night background. Now make sure you're getting right to the corners. It'd be such a shame if we did all this hard work, all this detail, and then our black piece of paper falls off. Vincent van Gogh inspired starry night silhouette sky. So it's as simple as that. I really hope you've been able to follow the steps, the simple steps to create the swirly sky, the wispy kind of movement in the sky as well, and a bit of a silhouetted foreground as well. Please make sure that you take some photos and tag me at artlife.melb on Instagram and at Artlife Art Lesson on Facebook. So I'd love to see what you've created and how much you've enjoyed this task today. Please also like and comment below if you've enjoyed the video and you've used it in your classroom or at home. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Take it easy.